The SAF performs extensive surveillance for infectious diseases among our servicemen, as protecting our troops against diseases is of paramount importance. All of our medical officers are trained to perform surveillance during their daily clinical consults and to report any potential outbreaks. The SAF also has an electronic medical record system called PACES, which we use to monitor trends, to determine potential threats, and to manage them accordingly. A new medical record system, PACES 3, will be operational by the end of 2015 and will allow us to trend and analyze such data more comprehensively. The SAF also has sentinel sites for surveillance of specific diseases, such as respiratory infections, with laboratory testing of samples to have near real-time information of disease patterns. In terms of combating infectious diseases, we have two broad strategies. The first is prevention and protection. This includes prevention through vaccinations, chemoprophylaxis, good hygiene practices, and health education. We also have comprehensive vector control programs to reduce the potential impact of diseases such as dengue and malaria. Finally, we have broad personal protection measures such as, as permatrin impregnated uniforms for vector-borne diseases and masks for respiratory diseases. The second strategy to combat infectious diseases is through early detection and response. As I have mentioned, early detection is done through surveillance and we have a dedicated laboratory to support us. If there is any suspicion of outbreaks, a swift response will be mounted to reduce the spread of disease. These measures are reviewed frequently and overseas deployments are included as well. The SAF also is also actively involved in epidemiological and operational research to better understand the effectiveness of our measures. As an example of how the SAF incorporates all of these principles to influence our response and decision making, during the H1N1 influenza pandemic in 2009, we activated our pandemic preparedness plans. Our surveillance programs enabled us to track the development of the pandemic to have targeted and flexible responses. Our mathematical modeling programs then provided projections of future spread, which enabled us to better execute our response measures over time. Our operational research and assessments have allowed us to validate the effectiveness and strengthen our policies to ring fence our servicemen against the impact of the pandemic and to maintain our operational readiness. The eradication program on Pulatakong is a four pronged strategy, as no one measure is 100% effective, but multiple strategies are synergistic and will prevent cases from falling through the cracks. The program includes preventing importation of cases preventing human-to-mosquito and mosquito-to-human transmission and reducing spread should there be a case. This has been very effective and our surveillance has showed a substantial drop in mosquitoes on the island. Therefore, Pulatokong was declared malaria-free in 2007 and the need for prophylaxis was lifted. I will go into some details of this strategy. To prevent the importation, a restriction period is imposed on all visitors who have been to malaria endemic areas over the past eight weeks. All foreign workers on the island are screened for malaria and any SAF servicemen with symptoms suggestive of malaria will be tested. Positive cases are referred to hospital for clinical management and prevented from entering Pulau For early detection of human cases, all SAF servicemen are educated on malaria and the need for early reporting of symptoms. Cases of fever with no localizing symptoms are tested for malaria and other common local vector-borne diseases such as dengue and chikungunya. The mosquito control program on Pulatokong consists of systematic environmental and infrastructural improvements to reduce breeding sites. Servicemen are also encouraged to reduce mosquito breeding habitats within their living areas. In addition, 
mosquito larvae are targeted through the use of BTI larvicide, which is applied across the entire island on a fortnightly basis. Next, personal protection includes the use of uniforms with permitrin, the application of DEET insect repellent regularly during jungle training. Finally, a ma malaria contingency plan involving multiple agencies was also developed in the event of an outbreak despite our previous measures. This plan comprises of active surveillance for malaria cases and intensified vector control. And this is done in conjunction with the DSO National Laboratories, Tertiary Hospitals in Singapore, the Ministry of Health and the National Environment Agency. The SAF is part of a whole-of-government approach to dealing with national emergencies and threats under the Home Front Crisis Management System. Our surveillance data and response strategies are shared on a regular basis with the Ministry of Health. The SAF also supports the government quarantine facilities and augments national resources in times of need. Indeed, I will give two examples. Influenza used to be common in the SAF, especially among recruits when they come together for the first time. This was identified through our Sentinel surveillance program where we tested respiratory illness samples for influenza and other pathogens. As such, we first decided to vaccinate recruits in 2010. Our evaluation determined that this was very effective in reducing illness and it was therefore rolled out to the entire SAF in 2011. The entire SAF now receives annual influenza vaccination. Our surveillance has also helped us to determine and monitor the effectiveness of the program. For example, from 2010 to 2012, we determined that the vaccine was very effective at more than 80% against influenza A, H1N1 and influenza B but less so against influenza A, H3N2, due to the vaccine strains used at that time. This helps us to determine the need for additional vaccinations with newer vaccines and to be on the lookout for potential outbreaks. The second example is varicella, or commonly known as chickenpox. While this is not a very severe disease, it results in substantial downtime with up to two weeks of medical leave, which impacts on our training and operations. We plan to start chickenpox vaccination among recruits, but had to determine who to vaccinate. About 70 to 80% of our recruits have had chickenpox infection in the past or were previously vaccinated. While there are no major issues with revaccination of these individuals, it leads, it leads to substantial waste of vaccines. Another solution was to test everyone before vaccination but this would result in time delay and substantial cost. What we did was an operational evaluation across one batch of recruits where we performed blood tests for varicella antibodies and obtained an oral history of previous infection or vaccination. We found that an oral history was very well correlated with the blood antibody test. Therefore, we now take an oral history to determine the need for vaccination. This program has all but eliminated chickenpox outbreaks and has reduced individual cases to a very low level. As Singapore and the SAF are part of a global interconnected community, the threats facing the world will rapidly impact Singapore. These include health security threats such as emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases, food and waterborne diseases, antimicrobial resistance, chemical and radiological threats, and diseases due to climate change. We should adopt a flexible risk management approach so that we can prepare for all hazards, especially for new diseases that we cannot prepare specifically for in advance. This approach necessitates having a good risk assessment program and risk management plans, including prevention, preparedness, response, mitigation, and recovery plans. These plans need to be incorporated together with a whole of government and all of society program. Finally, it is important to exercise these plans frequently 
to determine gaps and areas for continual improvement. We have come a long way over the past decades and the SAF biodefense system is now highly integrated with the whole national healthcare system. This is achieved through close collaboration and knowledge and information exchange with the Ministry of Health, Ministry of the Environment, academic institutions and international organisations. These networks are very important if we are to combat future unknown threats. We have also significantly advanced our understanding of biodefense and the effectiveness of our response and preventive measures against novel infectious diseases. The SAF hopes that it can continue to contribute to this national and even regional and international effort. I believe that the SAF will and can play a very important role to the defense against infectious diseases.